So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. As host my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Mosaic Motifs Crochet Blanket. I didn't think that this particular concept could be done in a motif format but I'm actually pretty excited about it and I worked on some work behind the scenes so that I could understand this. This is using the brand new yarn. This is called Karen Big Donut. A very uh, generous yardage of yarn and you can see all the different colors that are available to you and so you'll see that the motif is made up of a solid color. So yes it comes in solid colors as well. So there's a solid color that you can use and then these little breakaway colors are per, per the motifs that you'll see. And so when you look at it from a perspective of the way that it looks as a big piece you will see that it all puzzles together nicely. It looks kind of random so this is something that you can decide for yourself whether you want it random, whether you want it to more blend. It's really up to your creativity. To play with this particular uh, pattern today you'll need a five and a half millimeter size eye as an eye <laughs> a crochet hook and uh, it's actually gonna be a lot of fun. I got a major tip for you but we're going to take a look at the crochet diagram next because that's where the secret is. It's in the diagram work itself. So here's what one of the motifs look like. You can see how the lines just naturally follow out. Now I lost my way through mid portion of this and then I had to frog it back in order to get myself back in balance. So one major tip for you is that when you clear around look at it and just like study it and make sure that the lines look like they make sense. Because I got to a certain point uh, just about three quarters and I realized that one side I was off by two stitches and I could see that it was not matching. So um, my lesson for myself was that when I'm finishing around just take a look at it and make sure all the lines look in balance. So there is a crochet diagram available to you and this crochet diagram is looking at just one piece of the pie as per se. And so we can follow this. There's more to this diagram than you realize. So let's take a closer look. So what I want you to look at the most is that this here is one side of four. So you have one, two, three and four. So you know that this is going to happen on all four sides. The other thing that I found with myself is that I was questioning how am I gonna remember all of this stuff. And what I realized is that there's a center line that is in this. So if you can look at it and probably on the video you can see it better than I can with my own eyes. But there is a center line that exists. So what happens on this quarter or this side happens on the other. So you will notice that there's a center line where the center line then changes and flips over to create th the mirror shape. So when you look at it from this perspective let's take a look at number nine. So you have a single, 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 drop down, chain two, single, single and then drop down and then chain two and then you're at the center point. So on this side it's chain two and then drop down, single, single, chain two, drop down, single, single and then the final one in the end. So what I'm saying to you is that when you seeing, uh, seeing it from this perspective there's a center line where you have to do the opposite work that's involved and once you understand that it becomes a lot easier. I also did find that once I was three quarters the way through this I was really starting to understand how this is gonna work and so when I have to do the other motif set of suggesting is that I think it will get faster and faster and we're gonna try to prove that today but I'll try to keep as a regular speed. So what I need you to do is that you need to choose your colors that you would like to play with. So the main color in the middle is dominant so it really jumps out at you. So let me just back you out a little bit. So the main color in the middle jumps at you and the other one's more kind of like a filler but the other color is the last one of this. So if you're thinking about joining together you may want to think about that as well. Here on camera I decided to use um, Red Heart with Love as the backdrop and then I used our Super Saver um, Ombre. I'm recommending that you probably don't use this particular combo. Use Red Heart Super Saver Regular and then Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. The With Love is a little bit thicker so you can see that it's a little bit disjointed in, in some way and that's because the tension of the two yarns are not working together so well. I can get away with it but you may see that and you're gonna think what's wrong? It's not you, it's the yarn. It's because they're not matching the tension of each other. Okay, so let's get ourselves started. Let's choose our main color. So I'm gonna use the same main color and because I'm doing the ombre the color transition from the ball is going to be slightly changing just ever so slightly as it goes out. And so I think that's an option that you can try for yourself. So let's get ourselves started and let's begin right now. 
So as we begin we're going to start off with our beginning round. These are actually double crochet not trebles. So those will be corrected in the future. So they're double crochet. So we're gonna start off with the chain four and then create the ring and then we will do this. So this is just one side of four and we're gonna start with round number one and two. Let's begin one and two now. So creating a slip knot put it onto your hook and let's begin the beginning chain. So you're gonna chain uh, four. So one, two, three and four and I need you to slip stitch into the beginning chain to form the ring. So just going into the beginning and pull through and now put this straggler around the outside of the chain so that you can um, hide that underneath and let's begin round number one. In round number one we're going to chain three. So one, two, three. That's not indicated in that diagram. Just remember that the chain three counts as a double crochet so don't forget that. And I need you to double crochet two more times right after it. So that will give you the total count of three. Now every corner that we do in this particular motif will always be the same of chaining two. So chain two to turn and then going into the center of the ring again right over top of that straggler the loose end. My mother used to call it a straggler if you're questioning that. So put in another three double crochet. And then we're gonna turn a corner. So how many do you chain to turn a corner? Did you say two? One and two. So then just remember that. So just three double crochet and then chain two and then coming back in. So you can see that there's three sides so far of four. And then this is a neat thing. So Jeannie uh, taught me this particular one before and I'm just gonna trim this out before I join it just so I don't lose track of it. And so they're asking us to join this with a half double crochet. So you're going to just half double crochet into the top of the first. So Jeannie taught me that years ago and this pattern has that. So you're just gonna pull and do a half double crochet and that half double crochet is counting as that space. So don't forget that. So now that we've gone around for round number one, we're ready for round number two. So round number two, we're gonna use the same color. So to start, we're just gonna chain up one and then you're just going to put in one single crochet into the beginning space. We'll finish that corner when we get back around but for now just carry on. So each one of the double crochet will have a single crochet. So one, two, three. You technically don't need to count it. Just make sure each one gets one. The corners is gonna be one single crochet and then chain how many to turn. It was two. So remember it's always two. And then single crochet back in to finish that corner. So continue to go around one single crochet in each of the stitches and then the corners are one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. Please do this all the way around and meet me back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up on the final side and I'm still single crocheting in each of the steps. So this last one here, you're going to single crochet. You are going to join it with the half double crochet but you need to get that other color ready before you do it. So grab the secondary color that you wanna play with and create a slip knot so that it will lock onto itself and just leave it off to the side. So when you go to join it with a half double crochet with the starting single, you're going to go in, pull through and you need to put that strand on there before you pull through the final. So that strand will be ready to go and ready for round number three and you're going to let the other strand just fall to the back side and just leave it out of the way and make sure don't crochet over top of it. Let's move on to round number three. So in round number three we're going to start up and we're going to then just chain one and put one single crochet into the space. You can see that this is a space and then you're going to single crochet the next two, chain two, single crochet then into the remaining all the way to the corner. So the one, two and then the corner. So remember the corner single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So we're only worried about creating this space. So rounds number three and four is basically the same thing. It's just there's gonna be an extra stitch. One thing I need to tell you is that the first round of every new color and you can see that's representing here is the thinking round. The next time you go around with the same color it's just a matter of following what you already did. So let's do rounds number three and four next. So let's do round number three. 
what I want to tell you that straggler that you have for this new color just lay it on the top of the line and then you don't have to worry about sewing that in later. So just chain up one and do one single crochet into the same space and you'll finish that space around. Make sure that you don't capture that blue one just leave it off to the side. They're both blue but that's a nicer blue. <laughs> so I want you to single crochet the next two in a row. Watch the stitches that you're not adding an extra stitch. The chain one always looks like it's in a, a stitch but it doesn't. So just look to where this one is wrapped. This one right here. It's wrapped into the space and if you can tell that you're laughing. And go right up over top of the straggler so that it traps it. So you're gonna just do the next two. So you did the corner and then the next two. Now you're gonna chain two, skip one and then do the remaining on the other side. So there should be two in a row like there is this side and then the corner. Remember what I said, it's a mirror. So you have three of this side, three of this side and there is that chain two that's in the middle. So to turn the corner, one, two and we do it again. So do the corner and then we just do the next two. Chain two, skip one and do the remaining of this until the other side. So keep an eye on it. Make sure that it looks the same and then do your corner and turn. So please do this all the way around for round number three and I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm coming to the end of number three and I'm just doing the stitches as I know it. So every two rounds is the same color. So I've only done one round with this color so I wanna keep it. So when I join it with the half double crochet to the beginning I'm going in and I finish it because I'm gonna keep this color moving on. And now we're going to do round number four. Now in round number four we're gonna match exactly what we see. So if there's a chain two then you're going to skip it and do a chain two over it. So to start round number four just chain up one and do your corner to start and then you're just gonna match the stitches that you see. So in other uh, videos like this I always say match stitch to stitch, chain for chain. So just match in the stitches and if there's a chain it's always a chain two. So just chain two to jump over that chain and then capture it on the other side. So the reason why there's an extra chain even though you're only skipping one is that that chain can fall to the back side so that it creates the blanket to be a flat texture on the front. So then you're going into the corner. Okay, so there was four on this side, four on that side and then to turn chain two and let's just do one more side together. So you started off the corner and just match stitch to stitch, chain for chain. So in the future rounds when I say that, that's what I'm expecting you to do. So I'm only taking you around this one here just so that you understand that and just make sure that you're consistent with your stitch work. So please do this all the way around. This is round number four and when we come back we're going to be um, switching out the color and picking up the color that we dropped and let this color just fall to the back side. Please finish round number four now. So when you come around to the end of number four you're gonna go into the last space and the join is where you're gonna change it. So wrap it and join it with a half double crochet to the beginning single and once you pull through you're just going to let this fall out of the way and grab the other one. This color when you're switching will be uh, coming up on the back side so it'll be just uh, a line that will be on the back side. So if that really bothers you, you need to end your yarn and restart but it will just be a traveler on the back side that you'll never see it on the good side of this. And then you're going to be ready for round number five. Let's take a look at the diagram once again. So let's take a look at number five. You're gonna chain up one and you'll put a single crochet in the first in the, in the space, one single crochet in the next, then you're going to chain two and jump. Then you'll do a single crochet, single crochet and this is a double crochet that is coming in to this stitch three rows below. So I'm gonna say this is a drop down. So I'll say single, single, drop and then there's, and then that's the, the mirror. So that's the mirror. So see how there's two singles on this side of this drop? There's two singles on the other side. So the mirror has just switched over. So then single, single, chain two and then single, single. So just remember that this is a mirror. So let's begin that and then row number six or round number six is just match stitch to stitch, chain for chain and just follow exactly. So you're only ever dropping down on the first round of any color. Let's begin number five. So whenever we see that there's two chains like this 
then that means that's gonna be a drop when we get there. So that's the middle of the drop. So if that helps you to know that now, that's it's a, it's a good thing. Let's begin and we're going to just chain up one using the brand new color and we're letting the other one just stay to the back side and you'll single crochet into the same one as the space and then you're going to single crochet the very next one. So if you're not sure which one it is, it's the one that is wrapped around the space. Do you see that? This is where people add stitches when they don't realize that. So you have two singles in a row and now you're going to chain two and skip one. So this chain two that I'm about to do will be a drop down when it does, when we do the color change next time. So in round number um, seven. So you'll chain two, skip one and then you do single, single and look the drop is ready. So that's the middle of your motif. So you'll drop down, so you'll double crochet and you'll just, you'll just pick out that stitch but stay on the front side of the work and double crochet. So those chains are just resting quietly in behind. And then we knew that there was single, single, drop. So that on this side, if you're not sure, you can see the chain work. So it's the one right after the chain work is that is that's the one you're starting with. So single, single and we wanna create a chain, chain two. So it's creating a space and then we're going to come into the next one. So we're skipping one single in and then we do the corner. Right? Does that look like the diagram? It should. So let's turn a corner and I'll take you through one more side. So chain two and then single in and then we single the next. And then we chain two to create a space. Jump only one and then we do single, single, drop. Just on the front side. And that, that's the middle of the mirror. So then you'll single, single and then chain two. Skip the next one and then come into the next one there and then do the corner. So please do this all the way around. This is round number five and I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way around on number five and I'm going to join it to the beginning with a half double crochet. I want you at this point to look at this. Does this look accurate? Does this look like it all matches each other? If it doesn't, you got a problem. So you'll have to frog it which means to rip out if you're new to crochet. So everything looks in balance to me. I have the spaces created for each one of those and I'm ready to go for round number six. So round number six is just chain up one and just uh, single crochet into the first corner. You'll finish that corner when you get back around and please just match stitch to stitch, chain for chain. So if you got a chain, just chain two and jump over it and then do the next ones and even um, the ones that are dropping down, that's just regular single crochet right up over top of it. Okay, so just keep on going and you're only worrying about the chain uh, twos in order to jump. So please do this around for round number six and meet me back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the end of round number six. So I'm single crocheting into the final and I'm ready to change the color back. So you're going to do a half double crochet, start it and pull through, let it hold, let that yarn fall to the back and grab the another one and just make sure it's taut meaning um, it doesn't really have a lot of um, slack to it and then you're ready to go then for round number seven. So let's go back to the diagram and let's take a closer look at what we're gonna get into this time. So in round number seven we're gonna start getting more and more complicated. What I wanna tell you here is that if you ever get lost in this pattern, see we just did one drop down, the next time it'll be two drop downs. The next time it'll be four drop downs and so you can use those drop downs to show you where you are just in case you're ever confused and looking at the pattern. So what we wanna do for round number um, seven here is that we want to be able to just single crochet into the corner and then we immediately chain two and skip the first one from the corner and then we do um, single crochet, single crochet, drop, chain two and then we're here at the mirror. So in the middle of the mirror there's three single crochets and then two uh, chains there and drop. See how it's opposite of each other? And then what we did here when we went in this order we're reversing it in the other order. So it's chain two, drop, single, single, chain two, skip 
and then one right into the end. So just keep an eye on that and then round number eight is chain to chain, stitch to stitch and let's begin to do number seven and eight now. Let's begin number seven. Chain up one and you wanna do a single crochet around that space. Okay, I don't wanna interfere with this other yarn that is just gonna hold out of the way. We immediately now want to chain two and we're gonna skip the first one out. Just It's right here. Do you see how that's going into the space? So we're gonna skip that one and we're going to immediately then just single crochet the next two in a row. And this should take you to where you need the drop. This is a drop. So you did a single single drop. And then we need to create an extra chain two and that will be the next one. So this here is technically ne the next stitch. If you can't tell, look and just pull these chains. You can see it. This is the next one. So this chain two is gonna skip over that one and immediately come into the next one. So then you're just gonna do three in a row. So one, two, and three. Can I give you a piece of advice? Well I'm going to anyway. See this one here? This is the middle. So these three should look like it's in the middle because it's the middle of the mirror. So now we're going to go opposite to what we just laid out here. So we're gonna start with a chain two, skip in the next one and immediately drop into the one after that. Do you see that? And then you're going to see just look at this side and just single the next two chain two, skip the last one before the corner which is there and then you're gonna come right into the corner and that was that side and I'll take you through one more side. So chain two and let's do it again and you'll do it on all four sides. So single crochet in, chain two, skip the first one out of the corner. So this one then you'll go single, single, drop, and then chain two and skip the first one right after that one. So it's this one and you're concentrating the three that are in the middle of the mirror. And now we're gonna do the opposite to what the mirror is. So we're gonna start off with the chain two, skip in the next one out and then drop in the one after that and then single, single, chain two and then come right and meet a skip in this next one and then go right into the corner. Please do this all the way around. This is round number seven and I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm still following the pattern all the way around. Well obviously right? So then I'm just coming right to the end. So I'm going to join it to the very beginning with the half double crochet and this is the first time with the color so therefore I'm gonna finish it and then I'm gonna begin round number eight. In round number eight, it's a matter of stitch to stitch, chain for chain. So just chain up one and apply one single crochet into each of the stitches that you're running into. So if you're not sure the first one, when you start a side, there it is. And the next one is a chain two. So you'll wanna skip over it with the chain two and just making sure that all the stitches that are in the single crochets and the drop down all get that. So just really watch these chain twos and please do this all the way around and this is round number eight. Coming around on number eight, I'm going into the last space and when you join it because you've just done your two colors now, when you go to uh, finish that half double crochet, drop that color, bring up the next one, make it taut and pull through and we're now ready for number nine. So before you go to number nine, just make sure that you look at it. Does it look the same? So each side should look identical to each other. You should have the same spaces and you're now ready for number nine assuming that. Let's begin number nine and let's go back to the diagram and review. So number nine and ten is where we're gonna start next time, this time and we're gonna chain up one and we'll do one into the space and then the next two and then drop. Chain two so you'll skip one and then you'll do the next two, drop and then chain two. Noticing that this here is the same so it's, don't include the end here but it's one, two, single, drop, chain two one, two, single, drop and then chain two. This is the mirror. This is the middle. So it'll be single, one single crochet in the middle and then you're gonna do the opposite. So um, chain two, drop, single, single, chain two, 
drop, single, single and then the one in the corner. And so then number 10 is just a matter of stitch to stitch, chain for chain. Let's begin number 9 now. So let's begin number 9. Chain up 1 and we're gonna do one single in the corner. Do not interfere with that one that's just holding off to the side. So I have a tendency when there's a straggler to crochet right up over top of it. So I wanna make sure I'm saying that for myself more than you. So I'm gonna single crochet the next two in a row. So one and two and drop. This is like aerobics. One and two and drop and then chain two. So like that's a lunge. Okay, so then you're going to skip the next single as that goes right up over top of it. So skipping the next single. So let's do it again. So one and two for singles. Drop and when you drop it if you're not sure just kind of push it forward with your finger so that you can see the stitch. So you drop and then chain two and then you'll skip the next one that's out. So there's only gonna be one in the middle. This is the mirror. So it's a single right as the middle of the mirror and now you're gonna do the opposite to what you just did. So chain two, skip over the next one and drop and then single, single. Okay, then do it again. So chain two, skip the next one and then drop and then single, single and then the next one is the corner. So just do your corners you know it. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So let me take you through one more side. So we're going to do the first two a single, single, drop and then chain two and skip over the first one and then just do the next two. So one and two and drop and then chain two and you're skipping over the next one which takes you right to the middle of the mirror. So single crochet and let's do the opposite to what we just did. So chain two to begin, skip the next one and then drop and then single, single. Okay and then you just do it again. So chain two skip the next one and drop then single, single. Okay and then you'll single crochet into the end and then chain two and then start all over again. Please do this all the way around for round number nine. I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the end of number nine and I'm just finishing off what I know and then remember number 10 is matching stitch to stitch, chain for chain. So it's the second time with the color. So you're just matching those chains and those stitches together and please do this all the way for round number nine. I'll be right back in a moment where we'll start number 11 with the other color. Coming up to the end of number 10, just finishing it off and when I join it, remember we wanna change our color back to the other one and let's begin for round number 11 next. So in round number 11 we want to chain up one and we'll do one single in the corner and then single, single, chain two and then this here is kind of like what we have for the repeat. So it's chain two, jump and so then single, single, drop, chain two and then single, single, drop and then chain two. So the chain two is the mirror, it's the middle. So on this side you're going to drop, single, single, chain two, then drop, single, single, chain two and then uh, single, single, single right to the end. Let's begin number 11 and 12 and let's begin that next. Okay, let's begin number 11, chain up one. You're gonna do one in the corner. Do not interfere with that other color that's holding on the, on the other side. So you did that one and then you'll single the next two in a row. So one and two and then create a chain two space and jump. So jump over one and now here's the remaining. So you're gonna single, single and then drop and then chain two and skip over the next one that comes out after that. So then you're going to go single, single and drop and then chain two. So this chain two is the center point of the mirror. So you're going to start this side of the mirror. So you're gonna drop, so just drop down the next side. 
So this will be pulling off like it does but it will get secured in the future. So then you just do this side. So then you'll do single, single, chain two and then skip to the next one and then drop. Okay, so single, single, chain two, skip the next one and then just single yourself all the way to the rest of the side there, right to the corner and then turn. So chain two to turn. Let's do one more side. So I've got single in there first. So we'll start again and you'll single the first two after the corner is done. So one and two and then chain two, skip the next one and this is the repeat that you have. So you have single, single, drop and then chain two. Skip the next one. So single, single and drop and the next chain two is our middle. It's the mirror. You see that? And now we'll come down the other side. So drop immediately once you have that chain two in there and then so it's a drop and then single, single, chain two. So you skip the next one and then just drop. So then single, single, chain two, skip one and then do the rest of the corner. Please do this all the way around. This is round number 11 and I'll meet you back up here in number 12 in a moment. So I'm coming up around on number 11. Just following the pattern as I know. Just to take a quick look and make sure that it makes sense uh, design wise and then just join it with a half double crochet and then please do round number 12. Just chain up one and match stitch to stitch, chain for chain and I'll be back in just a moment and we'll start round number 13 in a moment. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I want to just join it with a half double crochet using the opposite color and we're going to begin round number 13 in a moment. So let's take a look at number 13. We're gonna start off and we're gonna single into the corner and then we're gonna single to the next. So here is the repeat pattern. So chain two to skip, single, single, drop. Chain two to skip, single, single, drop. Chain two and then this is the middle and I remember that the middle has five stitches in a row. So it's single, single, drop, single, single and that will take you through the mirror. So then we do the opposite then. So chain two, drop, single, single, chain two, drop, single, single and then chain two and then do the remaining of the single crochets. Let's do number 13 and 14. We're getting closer to the end of this and let's do 13 next. So let's do round number 13. You're going to chain up one and you'll do one single crochet into the corner and then you'll single crochet into the next one out. And let's start creating spaces. So chain two and skips over the next one and then this is your repeat. So single, single, drop and then chain two skips over the next one that's out and then start again. So single, single, drop and then chain two and this takes you to the middle of the mirror. So skipping the next one. So you'll do single, single and the drop one is exactly in the center of the mirror and now you're gonna do the opposite to what you just did. So then the next two out are single, single, chain two, skip over and then drop and let's begin to do that again. So the next two are single, single, chain two and drop and then continue that. So single, single, chain two and skip one and you should have be the one before the corner. So it'll be a single and then the next one is your corner. So please do this all the way. Let me just take you through one more side. So let's just chain two to turn and single crochet back in and single crochet the next one right out from the corner. Okay, so chain two, 
skip the next one and then single, single and then drop and then chain two. Skip the first one out and go to single, single and drop, chain two, skip the next one and this is the center of the mirror. So you got single, single and the drop is the center of the mirror. So now you're gonna do the opposite to what you just did to get there. So you'll single, single and chain two, skip the next one and then drop. So single, single, chain two, skip the next one and drop. And then single, single, chain two, skip the next one, single into the next and into the corner. And you'll do that all the way around. This is round number 13. So I'm coming up at the end of round number 13, just doing the pattern as they know it. We got one more round of this color. So just uh, join it with the half double crochet, chain one and just continue around. So um, do your corners and do stitch, 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 chain for chain and this is round number 14. So I'm coming back around on round number 14 and when I join it, it's the second time of the color so I'm gonna let it drop and grab that next color and let's begin into round number 15 and let's go back to the diagram. So in round number 15 we want to just do one single crochet into the corner and then immediately chain two and then here's our repeat. So single, single, drop, chain two, single, single, drop, chain two, single, single, drop, chain two and here's the magic mirror right in the middle. So then you have three. Then you'll do the opposite. So chain two, drop, single, single, chain two, drop, single, single, chain two, drop, single, single, chain two and then just go right into the corner. And then round number 16 of course we are going to then just do stitch to stitch, chain for chain. Let's do number 15 next. Let's do round number 15. So just chain up one and do one single in there. Don't interfere with that other color that's in behind that's just holding. And so we immediately want to chain two and skipping the first one out. So it's right there. And then I need you to start doing that repeat that we talked about. So you're just going to just single, single, drop and then chain two and skip the next one out. So then go into the next one after that. So single, single, drop, And then chain two. So skip in the next one. So single, single, drop. And then chain two. Skip in the next one out. This is the center of the mirror. So skip in the next one out and you'll just do three that is right in the middle. And then we're gonna do the opposite to what we just did. So chain two, skip the next one and drop. and then single, single. Just do that again. So chain two, skip the next one, drop and single, single. So then chain two, skip the next one and drop. And then we go sing our single, single and we're at the corner now so just chain two skip the next one which is the last one before the corner and then go right into the corner for a single and then turn. So let's do one more side of this. So chain two. So single in and then chain two to skip the first one out. So single, here's the repeat, single, drop. Chain two, skip the next one. So single, single, drop and chain two and skip the next one out. So single, single, drop. Chain two, skip the next one and this is the center of the mirror. So it'll be three in a row. Okay, just always check it just to make sure. 
and now we do the opposite. So chain two to begin, skip the next one and drop. Chain two, or sorry, two singles in the, or one single in the next two. Chain two, skip the next one and drop. Single in the next two. So chain two, skip the next one and drop. Then single, single, chain two, skip the last one before the corner and go right into the corner. So single crochet, chain two to turn and then back in. Please do this all the way around. This is round number 15. So I'm coming up to the end of number 15. Is it getting easier for you? I don't know. But for me, this is really the second time that I'm going through it. It's really, it's a lot easier than it was the first time for sure. So, oh, I don't wanna change out my color. So I got one more color to go. See how anxious I'm getting? <laughs> okay, so let's do round number 16 and it's just chain up one stitch to stitch, chain for chain. And let's uh, do number 16 next and I'll be back in just a moment and we'll do number 17 and 18 when we come back. So I'm coming around to number 16 and I'm just filling in the spots that I know and then when I join it, I'm going to change the color this time. So back to the other color and this is the final two rounds of this color that we started with. Let's take a look at the diagram and let's go into 17 and 18 next. So going back to the diagram, this is the last time that we're gonna be using this color. So you can fasten off this color at the end of number 18 if you wish. And so we're gonna start off when you do a single into the corner and then one single on it on its own and then chain two and then drop and then chain two and then this here is the repeat. So chain two, single, single, drop, chain two, single, single, drop, chain two, single, single, drop and then this here is the center of the mirror. So it's chain two and then one into the mirror and then we do the opposite. So chain two, drop, single, single, chain two, drop, single, single, chain two, drop, single, single, chain two, drop and then chain two. So this is unique and then just do the final two. So just watch these very beginning ones that we're going to start with on number 17. So it's these chain twos that are in the beginning that are, they feel like they're out of sync but they're kind of not. So let's begin number 17 and 18. Okay, let's begin number 17 and 18. So just chain up one and do one single into the corner and then you're gonna do one single into the next. So this is the special one. So chain two, skip the next one and then drop and then right after that chain two and then skip the next one and then you can do what you know. So single, single, drop and then chain two. So skip the next one and then single, single, drop and then chain two. Skip the next one. So single, single, drop, chain two, skip the next one and so this is the one right in the middle. So this is a single crochet that's in the middle of the mirror. So now we're gonna do the opposite. So just chain two and skip the next one and drop and then single, single, chain two, skip the next one and drop, chain or single, single, chain two and drop. I'm assuming you know to skip and then single, single, chain two and then drop and watch this one here. You're going to single, single right after it or sorry chain two right after it and then skip in the next one and just go into the one just before the corner and then go into your corner and turn and we'll do it one more time, one more side. So chain two to turn. So here we go. So single and then we're going to single into the next and then chain two, skip the next and drop. Chain two right after it so it's unique. Skip in the next one and then start what you know. So single, single, drop, 
chain two. Skip to the next one. So single, single, drop, chain two, single, single, drop, chain two. Skip to the next one. And this single that you just did is the center of the mirror. Do it, do what you already know but up backwards. So just chain two to start. Skip the next one and then drop. And then single, single. Okay, so chain two. Skip the next one and drop. Single, single. Chain two. Skip the next one and then drop. Single, single, chain two, skip the next one and then drop and then watch this one because after it's dropped you wanna chain two and skip the next one in one single into the one just, bef just before the corner and then do your corner. So please do this all the way around. This is round number 17. I'm coming up to the end of number 17 and I'm just completing it as I know it. And I wanna join it, half double crochet and then do number 18. So chain one, match stitch, 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 chain for chain. And please do this all the way around for number 18. I'll be back in just a moment for the final round. I'm coming up to the end of the round 18. So I wanna go right into the space and I wanna come in and I wanna join it uh, with the half double crochet and I'm going to pick up the new one. Now this is the end of the line for this color here. So just create an extra long tail and just cut it and just leave it off to the side and we'll deal with that at the end of the next round. So let's begin and look at the diagram for the number 19 which is probably a really easy round to my perspective. In round number 19 it is our final round and basically when you see a chain two you're just gonna immediately drop. So you don't have to create any more spaces for new drops in the future. Just ignore these single crochets. I have to deal with something with that later. They're not part of the pattern. So what I want to do is just a single crochet into the space into the corner and then single crochet the next three. So I'm not worried about counting the stitches. I just every time I see a drop down I just gotta drop down and do that for the entire side and then just continue around. So this will make it the very final round so that there is a solid border and that's gonna be it for today. So let's uh, continue for round number 19 and let's do that. So you could either use a tapestry needle which I will demonstrate when I cut this one but this one here it's just resting off to the side and so you can literally bury that underneath if you wanted to just under a certain amount of stitches. So just chain up one for number 19 here and just a single crochet into the space. So you're gonna single crochet into each single crochet. If you wanna go over top of that straggler, the loose end you can and that will trap it underneath in the inside of the stitch. So whenever I see that there is a drop down which is next, I'm just gonna immediately just drop down. So I don't have to create any more chain spaces for the future and then this is just fixing it up, right? So then I single the next and the next one, see it's a space so I have to drop down and you'll do that all the way to the corner. So please do this all the way around and I'll be back in just a moment and I'll show you how to weave in the ends that you will have uh, left over and I'll be back in just a moment. So now that I've come all the way around in number 19 I'm just going to join it with a half double crochet and that's the end of the line for the motifs. So you need to make a total of 20 of these. You can do any colors that you would like to play with but once you're at the end of it you're gonna wanna secure the loose end. So turn it to the back side. You can see that where you carried up your yarn. That's not a deal breaker for me because the outside is, the other side is absolutely fabulous. And you're gonna just put this through a tapestry needle and stay to the back and just drag it underneath the stitch work. So don't interfere with the edge because you're gonna have to play with that when you go to join them. So just going through once and when you pull on it make sure it's taut but you don't change the shape and then 
just go back and forth the total three times. Do that with any loose ends that you may have on your motif and I would recommend you get all your motifs done. Now the pattern for the border is very flexible so if you don't wanna do 20 by, or sorry 25 of these you can literally do uh, just a smaller baby size. You can even do a king size bedspread for all, for all that matters because the border is just very flexible and will adjust. So when we come back we're going to begin to join so I'll show you how to do the flat stitch join next and that's the next part of our journey. So let's talk joining. We're going to use a flat stitch joining. What I'm recommending to you though is to make sure you get all the motifs that you would like to do. Now the border is very easy to do so you can just change the shape. If you wanna eliminate out maybe a strip of one of these you can easily adjust the border no problem. So if you wanna make a baby size you can. You wanna make a king size etc. You can do that. So what we're going to do is that what I would recommend to you is on a tabletop just lay out all your squares. If they have a, very, a, a variety of colors that you would like to do put it onto a tabletop. Lay it out to what you think it should be. Then what you're going to do is that you're going to use that stitch and you're going to just run it across and join these 10 together. It could be a different number depending on your size. So you're just gonna continue to flat stitch join them all the way across. Then you're going to move up and do the next one and join them all the way across and so on. Once you have them all joined in one direction you're going to flip your blanket and then join them across the other way. So they will cross over right in the center of each one of the joining spots but it's a continuous join when you go to do that. So you're gonna wanna use the color yarn that makes sense for you on what you would like to do for that and I'm gonna show you that particular stitch that is here. So it does a really nice look. Of course if you prefer to sew, you prefer to single crochet that's completely on you and I'll show you exactly what the designer would like you to do. So I am going to use the darker blue color that is here. Um, it does suggest to use the same one that is the ending color and uh, it's because it would be completely invisible but in my case because of lighting I would like to use that. So let me show you how to do that stitch next. So what you wanna do is that you wanna put a slip knot onto your um, yarn so you don't have to cut it and put it into a, a tapestry needle. You don't need to do that. And I need you to start in a chain two space of one of the corners and I'm going in noticing that it's not on the hook already and I wanna go into the same section on this side and I wanna go straight down. Now I'm going to put this loop onto the hook and I'm gonna pull through. Because it is a, a chain two space here I'm just gonna pull it right through and we're only gonna use the back loops only of each of the sides. Let the straggler just fall to the back side. So when you're crocheting with this the yarn is actually coming from the back of the project not from the front. So coming to the very first one you wanna go to the back loop so it's the loop furthest away from you. So go to the back loop on this one and be consistent and always grab it from the same one. So if I started with this one as, as a start you go to the back loop on the other and you're just gonna yarn over and pull through both of those loops and the original loop. Give it a bit of slack. If you're too tight it will buckle. So just start the next one. So back loop and back loop and pull through and through and provide a little bit of slack and continue along. Really nice easy concept to be able to do and then when you get to where they're joining to the next set when it's further on down here you're just gonna keep on going and continue to join them as you go and if your stitch counts are right you'll have exactly the right number of stitches. So this here is just gonna rest right in the middle here and you can just join everything that you need to do. So just keeping the yarn on the back side will create this. This is very much almost like a sewing machine concept. I'm just pulling it through. The trick is, is to be a little bit slack with it because it can be too tight when you do slip stitching as most of us already know. So please do this all the way across. When you get to the here just jump it across to the next one and continue to go and then when you're ready turn the whole and have all the rows done in this direction turn your whole project and then do the opposite way of coming back across and etc. We're going to be doing this. I'll show you how to fasten off in just a moment. I gotta attach this and I will then continue to the border next. So I'm coming across this particular example. So if the next ones were ready then I would have those ready to go to jump. So you'll just in this side you'll go into that chain two space right 
and then uh, on the corners and then just move to the next set of motifs going into the chain two space of the next one. So you just have to continue on and just be consistent, right? Okay, so I can jump to the next one if I had to and if this was the end of the line then certainly you can just finish this off and I want you to put it through a tapestry needle. So just pulling it through and I'm kind of making it look consistent as the first side as well. Do you see this? And what we're going to do is just put this through a tapestry needle and hide in the loose end. So this is a perfect way to join things without that tapestry needle being the main feature. I, ha I have no issues with sewing anything into the project. So you're just gonna go into the work and just pop out that needle to the back side. There. And if you just pull things nice and tight and then you just go back through. Try not to interfere with the front side so keep it to the back. And then again through the back side. It's the third time. So three times is a charm and it should never fall out on you. Now the loose end that you would have had when you started one of these would also be there and so you'll wanna do that with any of the loose ends that you have. So please do that and let's move on to the border. Now. So here's the back side of the project. You can see it's nice. So you do have the the visuals of the yarn carrying up on the side. That's not a deal breaker for me but if it was for you, you want to change your yarns every time of just finishing and fastening off. So that would be a lot of tail ends and I'm not sure it's worth the the effort to do that when really honestly that's the, the hiding that is actually pretty good, right? So let's uh, continue to the border and the border does not rely on a certain count. So we're just gonna get ourselves started and then rounds number two and three is just keeping within the same count. So it's gonna be re really quite easy because each one of the sides has your stitch. You're gonna wanna treat this here in the middle just with a nice equal level and let's begin uh, round number one of the border. So grab your corner of any corner really you'll have one, one of four choices and you're gonna have the right side so the good side's facing up and you wanna go into that chain two space right in the corner. Now you could, let's just join it and you need to chain two and that does not count as a stitch and let's do one corner completely. So you're gonna do a total of uh, two half double crochets and then chain two and then two half double crochets. So you'll do that every time you hit a board or every time you hit a corner. Now you're gonna equally space out these half double crochets across. So this technically is the first stitch right here and so you're just gonna go as a half double crochet uh, all the way across. You'll turn, come back around and etc. So I'll show you what it looks like at the join because you'll have to make some decisions on this round on how you would like to handle that and I'll be back in a moment. So I'm approaching where the join is. So you wanna do this with each one of the joints. Decide what you would like to do the first time you ever cover a join and then be consistent with all the rest of them that you cross over when you go to do it. So look at the spacing on how this looks and look at this and determine what you would like to do. So I'm gonna come into the last single crochet before the chain two. So I'll put one in the chain two. I'm gonna put one into the join spot and then one into the chain two and then keep on moving. So that's what my plan of action is going to be and then just keep doing that and do all your joints the same way crossing over. Do your corners remember two double crochet or two half double crochet, chain two, two half double crochet. Please do this all the way around for round number one. So coming all the way back around just technically, I haven't technically but I just wanna let you know that I'm, that I'm not uh, trying to deceive you in any way. So for tutorials it's more about the steps and sometimes completing a project for me. So once I get to the last one I'm just going to slip stitch to the first half double crochet that I started with. So ignore that chain two as it's not a stitch. And I need you to slip stitch to the next chain two and we're going to begin rounds two and three and two and three are exactly identical to each other. So you just chain two to begin because you're in the corner and then you'll do your two half double crochets first. You'll chain your two and then two half double crochets again. Now that we have already established our first round on when we did the join you can just safely just half double crochet yourself all the way uh, around and then just uh, do your corners as two half double crochet, chain two, 
to half double crochet. So you'll do this round, round number two and you'll do round number three exactly the same way and then you're gonna fasten off. I've already shown you how to fasten off yarn with the weaving of going back and forth a total of three times and this would be how you would complete the Mosaic Motifs Crochet Blanket by Yarnspirations.com. Have a good day and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.